Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. I'm proud to have my good friend, Coach Thomas Adams-Wall, who coaches the girls' team at Western Reserve Academy in Hudson, Ohio. Now, I like this podcast because Thomas is our first girls' prep school coach to join us. Now, Thomas and I got involved uh, back in the day when he was the boys' coach, coach at Western Reserve, and we talk about that. He has now, uh, you know, he had a McDonald's All-American, Chris Livingston, on his team, who now plays for the Bucks. Um, so we talk about that. We talk about the usuals, you know, what it takes to be a D1 guard, both for girls and for boys. Um, he grew up on a prep school campus in New England. He grew up at Governor's Academy in uh, Massachusetts and talks about that experience, talks about going to College of Worcester in Ohio, playing there, being a student coach, making it to the D3 Final Four. And we talk about admissions too because he's an admission officer at Western Reserve. So great conversation today with my good friend, Coach Thomas Adams-Wall from Western Reserve Academy. And if you like this uh, podcasting, go ahead and sign up uh, on all major podcasting platforms to make sure you don't miss an episode and enjoy our conversation. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm. I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. Maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Thomas, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Corey. Yeah, we go back a long time, and one thing I want to start out with is that you grew up yourself on a prep school campus. Yes, Tell me I what that was like. I, I can't shake the boarding school world. Uh, <laughs> I, so I grew up uh, at um, the governor. It's now the Governor's Academy. It was Governor Dummer Academy in Massachusetts. My mom was the director of college counseling there for about 30 years, and my dad was also the director of college counseling at Cushing Academy in Massachusetts. Um and my dad and brother both went to Exeter, and, <laughs> and so I, it's the only thing I've known my whole life. So, what are the pros and cons of growing up on a prep school campus? Uh, I mean, more way way more pros than cons. I think you know having access to the facilities uh, that all the students have twenty four seven dining hall. <laughs> you can, you know you can just walk over to the dining hall, get a meal, whatever. Um, I used to, uh, even when I was in middle school, I used to get off the bus at the front of campus and walk to the student center and go to the grill and get a snack for my walk, for my walk home to the end of campus. But, um, it was, it was, it was fun going to sporting events, meeting people from all over the world. I think, um, I grew, I started living in a girl's dorm when I, when I was young until I was about 10, 11 years old. And then we moved outside of the dorm, but, um, it's just giving me, kind of, the, you know, now working at a boarding school, it's given me kind of the, the full picture. Like I was a kid, then a student at a boarding school, and and now I'm working at one. So I've, 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 seen, I've seen the full circle of life in, in the prep school world. Absolutely. And then when you were at Governors, you played baseball, basketball, and football. And nowadays, you know, this is kind of a, a point of debate among families, is they're coming from all over the world. They're investing a good amount of time and money in prep schools, and they want to specialize in basketball. Some prep schools still require other sports to be played in different seasons. Um, but you did all three when you were at, uh, at Governor. So tell me now that you're in a different seat. What are the pros and cons of playing multiple sports like you did versus yeah. just specializing? Yeah, so um, I, you know, I, I loved playing three sports. Baseball was kind of my off season, hanging on the outfield, shag, you know, shag some fly balls. But um, football was actually my best sport, but I liked basketball the most. But my junior year, I actually, uh, we were junior and senior year, we were allowed to take one season off. So I did, I basically did fall basketball my junior year. And going into my junior year basketball season, I was like, this will really help me. And I felt like I didn't have a great season because I felt like I didn't have that competitive edge. Um, so I think I, I appreciated it. I know times have changed. Um, and I do think here at Western Reserve, um, you know, we do have 10 month sport offerings. And I think there is a benefit to that. I think the landscape's changed a lot. So, you know, having the ability to have uh, the team together through the fall, especially because at prep school every year, the team looks different. Um, so you can develop that chemistry, but you can also, um, you know, we also do open gyms pretty much not every day, but we have coaches coming in for workouts, open gyms. We've had coaches come in to check out our kids when we're lifting. Um, so there's a benefit to it as well to specializing, but 
but I do think a lot of kids kind of miss out on that competitive edge of being kind of a multi-sport athlete. It doesn't always need to be two, but I, I always tell our, our girls here, um, you know, do two sports. So I think a lot of our girls will do, will do track in the spring. They'll still do AAU. Um, and our coaches, our track coaches are flexible with that, but, um, but yeah, I, I do think it, you know, you, you, you develop, you develop better skills playing different sports because, um, you know, you're, you're not, always, you have a different role in every sport, right? But, you know, basketball is very different and, um, you know, playing football for me was great. I was a wide receiver and, you know, we ran the ball a ton. We probably throw it 10 times a game, but, um, but, but I think I was more competitive in other sports because I, I was more well-rounded as an yeah, I see both sides of it. I mean, I see the prep schools wanting kids to play different sports, learn different skills, have different coaches, teammates. Um, and like you said, they, there's cross-pollination between playing multiple sports. But I also get specializing because there's a lot of kids out there just playing basketball 12 months a year, and they're getting better with those extra reps, right? So I see, it's both, see it both ways, but there are prep schools that specialize. There are prep schools that make you play multiple sports i think it's up to the family when they reach out to these schools to know who offers what and they know what they're getting into ahead of time the worst case scenario on this that a client uh that was at a prep school and he played football in the fall didn't really want to want to play basketball but that was the requirement of this prep school that they chose and he blew his knee out the last football game of the year and then basketball was lost so families always ask me like is you know are we guaranteed to get a d1 scholarship i said no you're not. And also there is a slight chance you could get injured at prep school as well. I mean, it's a worst case scenario, but anytime you play a sport, there's a chance you can get injured. So like, that's also the extreme too, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Now you chose to play basketball at the college of Worcester. Tell me why you chose that school and what other schools you were looking at. Yeah. So, um, so I, basketball, basketball was not the main sport at my prep school. Um, like, across across the board of the school. I think it was more of a hockey lacrosse school. And so in my college search, I really focused on schools where basketball was kind of big. And I knew going into it, you know, it was going to be a challenge. And um, I was one of 19 freshmen. It was just a Division three school in Ohio. I was one of 19 freshmen in the program that, you know, when we got there. And um, when I graduated, we only had three kids still playing on the team. And, you know, I, I was I only, I only played for two years. Um, and I would say I, I spent most of that time on the bench, clapping my hands, cheering for teammates, but um, went to the final four of my junior year. I was a student assistant coach. Um, and then my first year after college, I actually uh, stayed on as an assistant coach there. Um, but I really chose Worcester because of the, the head coach, honestly. He, hmm. He's a great guy. And I, I knew that I wanted to work at a prep school when all was said and done. You know, I had friends that, you know, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. And I was like, I want to work in admissions and coach prep school basketball. <laughs> and um, so I, you know, I achieved my goal at, at age 23, I think coaching prep school basketball, working the admission office, but, um, but the coach at Worcester was, you know, he was a great role model for me. Um, his attention to details. I, I still follow a lot of that, you know, today here at Western Reserve and, um, you really just try to simplify the game and get them to get them to understand, like you do these little things really well, you're going to be successful. And, um, I stay in touch with them. We have his, they, they named the court after him. And next weekend we're going after his court induction, um, down at Worcester. So, um, but I looked at a wide range of schools. I think I applied to like 12 different division three schools all outside of new England. I knew I wanted out of new England. And, um, so I looked in like Ohio, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, Illinois, um, got into every school I applied to, had a lot of options, but ultimately decided College of Worcester was one of my dad's favorite schools. And he actually passed away when I was in eighth grade. And, um, you know, so I, I think with it being one of his favorite schools, I was like, ah, I want to, you know, I want to give it a try. And I didn't love it my first year. Um, but, but I, you know, my mom was like, you know, just get involved in, in some different areas. And, and I did that. And my experience was, was a lot better after that. So very, very happy to have gone to Worcester for sure. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Cause you and your, and your, position now you're helping kids trying to make the decision for the next level too so yeah, yeah. what'd you do after Worcester how long I mean you were there for one year after graduation what'd you do between there and Western Reserve yeah so I was there for so I was actually there for um for almost probably three quarters of the season and then my high school actually had a coaching position open up 
Um, and I was like, I talked to the head coach at Worcester. He was like, if you want to work in prep school, this is a good opportunity to get some experience. So I went back to Massachusetts for a month and a half, <laughs> coached ba- JV boys basketball. And um, and then the night after the season ended, I flew out to Western Reserve, interviewed, and they were like, can you start right away? <laughs> and I, I was like, I got to go to Miami for a week with my friends. But after that, I'll move in. So then went to Miami, went back, drove out to Ohio, and I, I've been here since. This is year 11. <laughs> so um, it's a great place to be. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful campus and a beautiful, I mean, what I tell people about Western Reserve, it's a New England prep school, smack dab, uh, 20 minutes from downtown Cleveland in a cute little town called Hudson. So, um, and with that being said, you know, give me a pitch when you talk to families, both on the boys and girls side, like, why should a kid come to Western Reserve? What do you, what do you say to them? Yeah. So, well, so for basketball, kind of going back to this specialization uh, conversation, we, we do 10 month boys and girls basketball. Um so the ability to to train year round with with a team, you know, it's not like two kids doing skill work every day. Uh, this past year, we had 13 girls doing doing fall basketball. So um, it, it's been really beneficial for for us, especially having new kids and kind of building that camaraderie. Um, it's been special, but but I also think being in Ohio, you know, that that's the hard part. You know, the hardest part at Western Reserve is getting people to come out and visit because. We're a one-stop shop. You go to New England, you can hit three or four schools in one day, um, do a tour interview, not, knock them all out here. You know, you got to fly out here, stay in a hotel and um, and come visit. But we really specialize our visits, I think. Um, I, I think that every family that comes through would say they feel like they get red carpet treatment um, so they can sit in on classes with kids. They, you know, we're not part of a, the state association, so kids can come in and work out and do a workout with our girls. They can play open gym with them. Um, so that, that's, that's really beneficial. I also think having grown up in New England and been at a lot of boarding schools, a lot of those schools are really remote. We have the opposite of that pro- uh, problem. Like you said, Hudson's a really great town and downtown's considered part of campus for our kids. Um, so having that freedom within the structure of, you know, you have a free period and you want to walk to Starbucks and get a coffee and do homework with your friends, you can do that. Um, you want to go get Chipotle after practice before, before study hall, you can do that. Um, there's shopping, there's a yoga lounge, there's a cycle bar, there's, there's everything, two grocery stores. Um, so our location, I think is, is definitely a benefit once people get out here and see it. Um, it's a lot harder to sell if you're just doing it over a zoom or a phone call or a text message, but, um, but, but that's kind of our pitch. I think doing, doing the year on basketball is great, but also not, not being part of the state association, not being a part of NAPSAC. We can travel wherever we want to. We can play whoever, you know, we're not hopping on a flight and flying to California, but you know, if it got, if it got to that point, we would have the flexibility to do that. Um, But we we travel extensively throughout the Midwest. We, our girls team went out to New England earlier this year. We will go out to New England in March for the first ever national prep championship as well, um, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. Now here's the challenge. We we talked to coach Matt Garvey, who's the boys team coach now. Uh, on a previous podcast and I want to ask this to you again because it's the number one question I get when I'm introducing families to your school as well as other prep schools mainly yeah. no- located in New England is all right if I'm located at Western Reserve and playing there am I going to get the same college exposure am I going to play the same competition when a family tells you they're also looking at New England schools like talk to me basketball wise how you answer that question yeah so, so obviously, NEPSAC is, is, is a great league, having played it myself. It's big-time basketball, both on the boys' and girls' side. Um, I think we counter it by going to a lot of exposure events. So, so yes, NEPSAC schools are all doing open gyms throughout the fall um, with college coaches trickling in and out throughout the year. Um, I do think a lot of the events that both our boys' and girls' team go to, they're packed baseline to baseline, just like, you know, just like a live period event. And I think you know, we go to five or six on the girls' side at different events. I would say the boys go to six or seven um, different events throughout the year where um, they're packed with coaches. But I also think, it, it, you know, as you know, in the basketball world, like a lot of recruiting is relationship-based. So mm-hmm. whether it's through grassroots or, or whether it's through, you know, our relationships. So on the boys' side, Garvey, obviously, head coach at Providence, Pete coach at Dartmouth, um, and George Mason, and was at New Hampton forever. Sean White has coached in the G League. He's coached in college. Um, you know, I coach D3, but I, I'm also in, um, involved with uh, an Adidas 3SSB program based out of Kentucky. Um, 
So having access to those college coaches is huge because it, because it is a relationship based business. And, um, you know, if you have players, you know, they're going to come see, see the people that they're close with because those are the people they trust. Um, and I, I, I think that, you know, in terms of the question about competition, like Ohio basketball is really good, both on the boys and girls side. Um, I think not, not being a part of the state, state association makes it difficult at times to schedule more so on the boys side than the girls. Um, so the, I think the boys probably travel a little bit more than we do. Um, but the top, the top girls team in Ohio, they'll, they'll play us, you know, no matter how good we are. Um, so it is nice that we, we don't have to travel so extensively, but we still will to play large public schools, other private schools, other boarding schools. Um, so we really get the best of both worlds. And it, it's really fun to go into a, a large public school in Ohio with a, with a good crowd and, and get a win on their home court. So uh, that's one of my favorite things for sure. Yeah. And I say this over and over again, both in articles and podcasts and, and, and social media that, you know, you pick a prep school, especially for a post-grad year based on the relationship a player has with the coach. Because to me, the coach is the most important part of this whole process. So yeah, whether you're in Utah or there's Wasatch Academy or, or other places that are random, like the coach is, is going to determine your experience there. So you've done a heck of a job of recruiting a lot of the players I've sent you, and we've obviously connected on a few players. So, and they've, they've been placed. So to me, you know, you're absolutely right on that. Yeah. Um, I want to go to boys first because you did start out at Western Reserve coaching boys. Um, and one of your players ended up being a McDonald's All-American, and he didn't finish with you guys, but now he's in the NBA, and that's Chris Livingston. And what yeah. I want to ask about Chris is, you know, now that he's in the NBA, like what skill set did he have or what work ethic did he have or was it natural? Like what did he possess that was different than other players you've seen or coached that got him to that level? Yeah, I mean, first of all, great kid. His brother's a great kid, too. He was here with them for their sophomore year. Um, both, both of those kids are gym rats. You know, they mm. only if they're not if they weren't in class, they're in the gym. If you know, if they weren't in the gym, they're doing strength conditioning. Um, I think what really separated Chris apart um from others, not just here at Western Reserve, but in the country, um, his athleticism off the charts. I mean, his in his first step, his first step was one of the quickest first steps I've ever seen. He, he had the ball on a string, he could create his own shot, um, and he could really lock in defensively if he needed to. Um, I thought that his the second half of his season at Kentucky, he really he really kind of found his way within within kind of what their system is, um, which was, you know, which was obviously different than high school. You know, he was probably averaging 30, 30 points a game, maybe a little less. But um, and I think I think that's where prep school is great as well, because, you, you know, you can be a big fish in a small pond. But as soon as you get other players around, like your role is going to change. So how do you adapt to that? And I think. I think that's a huge added benefit of going to prep school, not just Western Reserve, but any prep school, playing with good players. So you get you get to kind of deal with that adversity earlier on rather than getting to college or freshman year and be like, this is totally new. I've never, you know, I've never had to had to pass up an open shot or, you know, I've never had to not be the guy that scores, you know, 25 points a game, I think. Um, I think that that that's that takes a lot longer for some kids um once they get to college and that 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 sometimes makes or breaks kids once they get there right coach will write them off if they're not gonna buy in and get it you know get into the system that they want them to play so we try to do a lot of that here i think both on the boys side and the girls side um and it is challenging it doesn't you know it doesn't just happen overnight it, it doesn't just take weeks it takes months um but but yeah i mean it, it's been fun I, I've, I've caught some of the games that he's gotten in at, at the end um He's playing for the box, so it's pretty cool for him to play with Lillard and Giannis. Yeah. Uh, his first year, that's got to be quite the experience for him. Yeah, now you mentioned with him having the quick first step, being athletic. Is this stuff he trained or is this stuff he's just born with? I mean, so he did – he 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 had a strength conditioning coach um, down in Akron because they didn't live on campus. Um, I'm assuming they did a lot of that stuff here, but – I'm I'm assuming some of it was natural, but like that, he worked. That kid, that kid worked really hard. He was not a kid that was just like, oh, you know, I I was born this way. Like I'm ready to I'm ready to roll. Like he he worked at everything, and um, so much that I remember one time I was watching him work out with his trainer, and uh, he said something to him along the lines of like, you know, this can we can we chill with this high school stuff? Like let's do some pro stuff because um, mm-hmm. his trainer works with a lot of a lot of NBA guys, so. Um, I think that shows to his kind of maturity and his, his eagerness to like, 
I want to do more. I don't want to just do this basic stuff. I want to, I want to keep going. I want to uh, progress quicker than, you know, other kids my age. And, you know, he's still young. So, you know, hopefully in the next two, three years, we see him kind of take that leap that you've seen some of those younger guys that come to the NBA, you know, it takes, it takes time, right. You know, they're not fully developed to their best, best potential yet. And, and, and I'm hopeful that he'll have a successful career in the NBA. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this question. Is it harder for girls to get interested in prep school than boys? Um, I, I don't think it's harder for this, the girls to be interested. And in. I think it's harder for the parents to send them their daughters away. I think that's the, I think that's a big challenge. And, um, you know, we've been fortunate enough here and, you know, it's to, to, to get boarding girls who, who, want, who are good at basketball or who want to be at the school first and foremost. But, um, it is, it is really challenging, I think, to get the parents on board with sending their daughter away. And, um, you know, so we've had the luxury, I think, in my first four, four years on the girls side, we, it's, I think it's easier to get international students than it is to get domestic students um, on, on the girls side. But um, just and I think a lot of that's just because of the opportunity to, to be in the States and get in front of coaches that aren't going to all the FIBA, FIBA events and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, that, it, it, it is a lot more challenging. I think when I was on the boys side, you know, parents would be like, yeah, take them, <laughs> you know, take them. Right. Away from me. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, it is challenging. So it, it's a, it's definitely a smaller market for sure. OK, uh, is it different? placing boys in college versus girls or is it the same uh i i think it's about the same i i think um on the boys side i definitely did not have the network on the college side that that i do on the girls side now and i think a lot of that's credit to um richard jetter who's actually the the director of the au team i coach for his wife is actually the head coach on the women women's side at dayton she played at uconn they know everybody um, so they, they, they both been really great and instrumental with, with me of, you know, you know, connecting me with different people. And, um, I have a college friend from Worcester also, whose dad's the winningest WNBA coach of all time. He's now the athletic director of division three school in Ohio. And, and his son is actually who, who I went to college with is actually on staff at Dean. So, so through that group, um, alone, um, I feel like they, they've done a great job of kind of helping me understand the landscape of girls basketball a lot better um while also like helping me with 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 the girls that we have here so i you know i definitely credit them um and, and nothing that i did <laughs> all right all right last question here you also work in admissions and what do listeners need to know about what admissions looks at in student athletes yeah um i i, I think for i think for any school like you know, you gotta want to be at the school first and foremost, and it's it's pretty easy in a conversation with parents or kids. It you know if they're hunting for this hunting and looking at the school for the wrong reason. So I think it's easy to weed those families out. Um, but but I think um, you know students who are looking at prep school, like you gotta have good grades. You know we're yes. not we're, you know the, the and especially post grads. Like the post grad year is not a year to improve your grades necessarily. You can only replace one core class, you know, if you're doing a post-grad year for your core GPA. So I, I think a lot of people think a post-grad year is, you know, just an extra year of grades and it, it really isn't. Um, but, but also the post-grad year can be great because, you know, you may, you may have missed a season due to COVID or you may have missed a season due to injury. Um, that that's where it's a, it's a good reason to be doing it. And I know, you know, you've had families who, who have been in, in that situation and, and they've done really well here. They've done really well at other prep schools that you sent them to. So um, I think the families that are doing it for the right reasons, the, those are the easy ones to kind of pick out. And those are the ones who, you know, are the good students that aren't trying to, you know, ch chase a dream that's not going to, you know, come. And, and not every not every kid's going to be a Division One player. Not every kid's going to be a Division Two player. But also go watch a division three men's basketball game, go watch a division three women's basketball game. Like it's really good basketball. And I think we've seen this trickle down, um, you know, in part to the portal um, kids get in an extra year kids who are division one players and then end up the portal or going D two or going D three, like John Carroll right up the road. They're the number one men's team in division three basketball. I think they have six division one transfers on their team um, and, and they're killing it. And, and, you know, and, and, 
while those kids may have had full scholarships, you know, there's also merit money that can be given at the division three level. They don't call it athletic scholarships, but um, I guess my other advice for, for any kids looking at prep school is like, you, you know, you are where you get recruited. Like, so it, you know, it's no one else's fault. You know, it's not your fault necessarily either. Like, I think some coach would be like, Oh, you didn't put the work in or anything like that. But it's just like, sometimes like, it's just, you know, you have to go where you're going to be fit. Um, and if your goal is to play, like go where you're getting recruited. Don't, don't chase a pipe dream. That's never going to come. Absolutely. Great advice. Great advice. We're going to some quick hitters now. Right, Thomas? Yep. Best player you ever played against. Oh God. Um, best player. This isn't as quick as you probably want it to be. That's um, all right. Oh, shoot. I mean, Nepsack, there must have been some guys, right? Yeah. So I I would say St. Mark's had a role with Dave Lubick when I was in high school. They, they, uh, Eric Murphy played at Florida. Um, uh, Lubick's son played at Georgetown. I guarded a center, Pete Casillo, who played at Amherst. He was like 6'9, 250. It was like, it was like trying to move a blade shirt. Um, I would, I would say, I, I would just say the entire St. Mark's team when I was there, I played against Lawrence Academy, who was really good too, played against Ricky Davis's brother. He was really, he was really talented, really athletic. Um, but yeah, I would probably say that whole St. Mark's team with like Eric Murphy, Eric Lubick, I think it was Eric Lubick or Nate, no, Nate Lubick, but yeah, they were, they were, they were a wagon. They were really good. <laughs> Who's the best boys player you've ever coached against? Best boys player I've ever coached against. Um, oh man, Who would be? I mean, Seth over at Hill had a had a really good team the year we had the year we had Chris Livingston. We went out there and um, we kind of had it rolling early on, and they were they were ready for us. He had uh, two brothers from Maryland. And those both, I forget what their names are because, you know, I'm, I'm focused on the girl side now, Corey. I don't remember yes, names. Yes. <laughs> uh, but those, those, those two bro- brothers, they were, they were locked in and they, they defended at a high level. They shot at a high level. I think one of them went to play at William and Mary. Um, but they were, they were, they were a really good team. Um, those kids, those, those, they were disciplined. They, they were high IQ kids and, and they, they really got after it. Seth does a really good job. How about on the girl side? Who's the best girl you're coached against? Uh, pro- probably uh, Sanaya Hall. She's actually she's the number three ranked kid in the country. She's actually up at Laurel, um, which is about thirty minutes away. It's an all girls uh, day school. We play against them next Friday night. I mean, she's got she got offers from South Carolina, UCLA. She she'll go wherever she wants. She's only a sophomore though, so Oof. she's a six two guard. But yeah, she's 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 hard to guard. But we'll get, we'll get her next Friday hopefully. Okay. What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh man. Or why? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in Ohio, even though even though a lot of people probably don't know it. I love Shawshank Redemption. Um, so Ma- the Mansfield Refor- Reformatory is actually in Ohio, about an hour and a half from from us. So and they they do a uh, on Halloween weekends they they do a haunted house there, and there's a line off the highway to go to it. So um, pretty cool. Yeah, when I stopped in to visit you this summer. Um, we where we were going next, we drove by Mansfield, had lunch there, and tried to get in to see where they yeah. filmed Shawshank Redemption. But uh, there was some heavy metal festival they were setting up for, um, <laughs> yeah. with like Slipknot, Limp Biscuit, and Lamb of God. So we we were <laughs> not able to get in at that like, time. Like Mansfield. <laughs> yeah, typical Mansfield. Uh, what are your hobbies when you're not doing what you do on the court and in admissions? Yeah. Um. So. So I'm a I'm an avid New York sports fan. Um, if 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 I'm at home, I'm watching sports. You know, college basketball, men's, women's, NBA, um, and I, I'm a big NFL fan. I'm a huge Jets fan. They're really bad, and obviously the Aaron Rodgers injury hurt that season. But but de- probably watching sports. I love to travel. I've been to um, 49 states. I haven't been to Alaska yet. Um, so I, I hope hope to check that box eventually. But um, Love traveling as well. Yeah, that's that's probably my thing. Awesome. Is there anything we didn't talk about today that you want to mention before we go? Uh, I I just think to any to any viewers who you know who are considering working with you, I think you do a really great job. Um, you know, you you know the coaching staffs, you know the schools, you know you know you know the head of schools, you know you know you know the athletic departments. So I think 
um, just try, you know, trust your advice, you know, for families who are, who are working with you and, um, and really get on, get on the campuses that you're suggesting, because I think the kids are going to be, you know, they're the ones who are going to have the experience. It's not, it's not me as an admission officer or coach having that experience. So, um, that's why I like our, our kind of red carpet carpet treatment of spending time with, with, with players on the team, going to a class, you can kind of get the full picture for the school. So, um, you know, when, when you're visiting schools that you're suggesting, like really take it all in because they're the ones that are going to be going there. And, um, they're the ones that are going to know the feeling when they step on a campus for, you know, what feels like it's going to be the right fit for them, um, to achieve their goals. Absolutely. And where can people find you, Thomas? I, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me, uh, on the school admission website, reach out to me via email. You can text my office line. Um, if you, you know, if you're, if you're working with Corey, just ask Corey to connect us. Um, I'm not, I'm not hard to find though. I don't think so. You know, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and, um, want to bounce any ideas off about different schools and all of that. So, yeah. And we'll put all that in show notes. So contact information, look below and you'll see it. So, well, Thomas, old friend, thanks so much for joining the podcast. You're our first girls coach to, to, uh, to grace your, you know, your presence on our podcast. So I appreciate that. And the breakdowns you gave, um, and yeah, I highly suggest anyone reach out, uh, to coach Adams wall. If they've got any questions about, um, you know, Western reserve girls basketball in general. Um, you know, so that's, he's a great resource for that. Yeah. If you, uh, if you'd like the, uh, this podcast and want to make sure you don't miss any sign up for the prep athletics podcast, um, on YouTube or all the major, uh, podcasting platforms. You won't miss an episode. If you've got any questions on prep school, go to prepathletics.com. Once again, that's in the show notes too. And reach out to me with any questions. If you're interested in prep school, I'd be more than happy to get back to you. And um, yeah, subscribe to YouTube. Make sure you don't miss anything. So um, with that being said, thanks so much, Thomas, for joining. Good luck the rest of your season. Thanks for being a good friend. And, uh, and um, you know, just you help me out with questions I've got in the prep school world as well. So I appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much for coming on and joining me today. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor. Excited to be the first girls coach on here as well. But hope, <laughs> hope you have a good rest of, your, rest of your Friday and a great weekend. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, Court.